skins and we back again the best coverage in college sports we come to win with brandon mark and matt no one go hard as that share with your folks and they'll learn where it all be at it's just three of the guys childhood friends that be setting the vibe with a few hot takes jokes and predictions love the boise state we now welcome you to listen shirts and skins let's go Shirts and Skins listeners, what is up? I am Matt Lamb, joined today by Mark Moss, Brandon Minert. You're listening to the Shirts and Skins podcast. We also have a special guest today. Yes. Very excited about it. Uh, Boise State wide receiver. Local legend. Local legend. <laughs> yeah, himself. Austin Bolt is here Austin today. Bolt. What's up, guys? All right. Excited hey, to be thanks, here. Thanks for joining us, Austin. Um, we will chat with Austin. We're going to talk some basketball. We're going to talk some football. And stick around because we're going to do five questions with Austin Bolt. Austin Bolt, possibly top, as far as like high school athletic careers, top 10. Top 10? Top, 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 what are we talking five? about? Top In Idaho? In Idaho. Oh, way top above five? top 10. Dude, the guy was Gatorade Player of the Year basketball <laughs> okay, and football. Impressive. That's How impressive. many state championships? Basketball? Who votes on that? Who votes on that? Doesn't uh, matter. No, he doesn't even know. Um, uh, is it journalists that vote on that? Or who, who picks For the... Gatorade. Michael Jordan. Gatorade? Oh, yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That's the so biggest... Wait, that's the highest honor. Hold though. on. That's it. Austin Bolt. Yeah. Are you talking about... Okay. Uh, just Idaho high school. High school. High school, okay. high school athletes. Well, this is an awkward. We're, time. we're, you know, <laughs> so, right in front so, of the guy. I just go... It's yeah. just interesting to discuss it because... There was one kid, I'm sorry, there was one kid in our high school that was track and field. Donovan Kilmartin, yes, baby. That was, he was an All-American <laughs> in track and yeah, field. Yeah, he was. He was. And he went to UT, that's a, Texas. That's, he was on the Olympic, you know, he was yes. get for yeah. decathlon, but he had some injuries. Is that's that track that No, I mean, that <laughs> no. counts, sure, but no. this is This is big okay, time. Cody Pickett? Cody Pickett? Okay, Cody Pickett, now we're talking, right? Because he was he was football. And basketball. Football and basketball. I don't, I don't know, know if he was Gatorades. We should get Cody on. Yeah. Do you know who Cody Pickett is? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm close with him. I oh, you are? NFL yeah. quarterback. G- NFL quarterback. That's yeah. a big deal. See, but Bolt, we don't know. Yeah, yeah, we don't know, know, man. He can still get there. But just yeah. high school-wise, I don't know I how know many people. Oh, you big. know who was a good one? You know who's a good one? Um, The linebacker. That played at BSU. That was from Coeur d'Alene. The, the, oh, uh, what was his name? Duncan. Uh, is it Keegan? Duncan? Is it Keegan Duncan? No, no he was. This was, was um, he was the guy that got punched. Byron oh, Howe. Byron Howe. Oh, okay. he was like all state a couple years in a row, and I think he was Gatorade twice. In what? In just football. No. Okay, I'm Come sorry. On, I'm dude. trying. This uh, is the two the two main sports. Hey, He's Gatorade Player there, of the Year in Boston. Austin, who's who's better than you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just tell us. Put it to rest. Say uh, nobody. No, I'm just curious. Top five. He's, he's humble. Folks. Anyways, that's pretty awesome. So he. That so cool. to to reiterate, right? We don't need to go down all of it. But he's from went to Bora High School, right? Gatorade Player of the Year in basketball you, and football. Right. For, so that was your senior year. Yeah. Yeah. Then you guys grew up here. Yeah. Well. Yeah. My parents are from California originally, and yeah. then they moved here. I think my dad moved here in the. 80s, late 80s, 90s, mm. and then so yeah, me and my two other siblings were born and raised here. Okay. The biggest question, Bora, why Bora? That's the biggest question. We I mean, not like a <laughs> traditional. <Ouch. laughs> like, I'm just saying. Oh. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm just like not. Dude, are you trying common. to pick a fight, <laughs> no. dude? He could I'm take not, you. But, yeah, I know um, that. I clearly. No, we were, um, yeah, we're in the school district of Bora, yeah. and my dad's very, you know, traditional, like, no transfer. I like go, that. Go where you're no supposed transfer. to go, and then... Go where you're supposed to go, people. Yeah. Did that happen? Oh, why he high school? <coughs> Excuse yeah. me. Yeah, everyone, everyone that we done, like, everyone I, I was playing with and I played with or, you know, on all my years of uh, Bora and stuff, we're all in the Bora district. Um, yeah. All my friends, you know, I grew up with a great group of friends. They're yeah. all in Bora district. We were all within five to ten minutes from each other. It wasn't yeah. like someone was all the way out in Star traveling to go to Bora. <laughs> the thing about it, dude, is like the... I wish they the would luck. crack down. I wish that's how it was today. Dude, the luck you have to have now to have that happen in, in like a Bora yeah. or a Capitol or a Centennial. Well, yeah. or, or real, I mean, a, a school district that doesn't have a lot of growth. Yeah. yeah, but it, I, you say luck. I don't. I mean, there Dude, was like Austin. All, he had and and Andy Peters played with Andy Peters, right? Uh, not in high school. Oh, you didn't. Okay, 
Um, he so went he went to Timberline. Oh, that's right. That's so right. you say luck, but you take no offense to the other guys. You take Bolt off that team. Okay, but still, you had I mean, you had ten you know other I mean? guys that had to. Block. No, I I just wish, uh, and not to get into high school sports too deeply, but it it bugs me. It bugs me right now that you have guys playing for. I'm not going to name schools. May have already. You already did. Oh. <laughs> you have guys. You have you have schools that you got kids living in different counties that are playing. Oh yeah, there's state they, champions. I didn't think they can. They do. There's, there's kids living in Middleton playing for Hawaii High School. Yeah, there's ways you can get around. It's yeah. it's. <laughs> I don't like. I mean, they people do it. They get at or whatever they do. Open enrollment. I like to. I like. You know, we grew up together. We yeah. played together for how many years? And I don't know. It yeah. just bugs me. That's, heard, that's the way of the world. As but a it, parent, you hear, like, there's some coaches that are like, hey, you should take a break between middle school and high school. Yeah. People are doing that. Yeah. <laughs> Eighth and ninth grade. Take a year off. Take a year off. Well, and do what? Play Xbox? I mean, like. Train. Grow. Get bigger. <laughs> it's different, man. It's yeah, it, But let's know. let's be honest. NIL now in college. Scholarships. There's more money on the table. There's, there's like, money on the table. Parents are being, you know, they want their okay. kid to... I'm not saying bad, good, and different. It's just, it's a different time. It's a different time. Did anybody approach you, honest question, and were like, hey, offer you any sort of financial incentive for, like, schooling or anything? Seriously, no, but, uh, you know, I'd be playing against Rocky, which... A lot of my buddies were on Rocky because I played club basketball, and, like, their head coach, Roy, he was just like, Yeah, hey, yeah, yeah. I no guarantee, you, like my buddy Briggs, you know your buddy Briggs over there, that like, you live in one, like one of their rooms, <laughs> and you know we, we give you something. But you know he was always joking. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know there's there's sometimes that people were just joking around, like hey, we, you know, <laughs> give you how, whatever it is for you to come here and play with us. Yeah, you know, Briggs, like and then we will give you a room to live and <laughs> stuff like that. But no, I think it was you know everyone liked the you know we had four teams that were legit like competitors who could win state every year. It wasn't just okay, we're focused just like one. one team that should win it. And if they lose in the state, then it's like, well, crap. Now it's like, who else is going to win? Like, we had legit four or five teams each, every year I played in state basketball and football. That's like, okay, these teams all have, you know, equal talent. Yeah. So. It's pretty good. Yeah. Austin, can you name all the positions you played in high school football? Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, it wasn't just one. It was a lot. No, it was uh, played running back, quarterback, uh, receiver, tight end, D end, <laughs> linebacker, <laughs> safety. Kick returner, punt returner, punter. There you go. You were a holder too, right? I was a yeah. That was the kickoff. <laughs> just off, stay on the, the field holder, and just yeah. kind of find a spot. Yeah, <laughs> whatever. <Basically, yeah. laughs> Did you ever sit out any plays? Um, only on uh, only on kickoff. Okay, yeah. <laughs> only on kickoff. <laughs> was I want to get him hurt? Was Player that, safety. Yeah, 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 yeah. Was that good? Did you like that? I mean, yeah, was that, I loved it. I yeah. wouldn't want to change it any other way. Is you know, if I was going to be there playing, like, why not play as yeah. much as possible? Like. It, is, is that how you were growing up? Just put me in. I'm going to play. I love playing. Yeah, we did, you know, Pop Warner. It's around here. It's called Optimus. And I was, you know, same thing. I was linebacker and tight end slash receiver slash running back when I was a kid. And yep. then when I went to West Junior High, I was the end running back and then kick returner. So I was just always like I always wanted to play every like second of the game. I'm, yeah. You know, so it was always fun to be on the field. You loved it. Yeah. You love it. Yeah. That's, is – um. So you you go, I mean, pretty illustrious, you know, growing up, obviously, you must have been probably best player on the kid, grow, you know, best best player on the team growing up. You dominate in high school, basketball and football. Um, what was it like getting to Boise State? Was it, was it one of those things where, so last week we had Johnny Mallory on, and he talked about how when he was a freshman in college, I think, he was listening to Idaho Sports Talk, and he was like, one day I want to do that. And there now he is, right? Yeah. Now he's on. W was that something with you and uh, Boise State? Did you always want to play on the blue, or was it was it something where you want to play bigger, and that's where you settle, or how'd that go? No, when uh, when I was a kid, I think we have a picture when I was in first grade of me in an Ian Johnson jersey for picture day. Like, I, you know, I never dressed up. I was wearing an Ian Johnson jersey. <laughs> um, and then, you know, my parents would let us all, like, when we were younger, paint our rooms. And mine's my, – my walls are blue and orange <laughs> and white with, like, wallpapering. That's, like, the Boise State logo yeah. around it too. So, you know, the first time I started watching football and stuff, I was always wanting to play on the blue. Um, I used to tailgate in front of the – because I know the owner of the tavern. Like, his son's mm -hmm. my best friend. So, like, we, he'd tailgate right in front, and I'd watch BSU games since I was in, like, third grade. So, Dude, But you grew up at the time, like, the golden era. Yeah. Like, that was the best <laughs> yeah. of any – yeah, it was a good era. You, like, all yep. the kids that grew up in that time, they should all be <laughs> BSU fans, honestly. You because think so. there's, like, you, you no were like, other experience. You were, like, 
five or six for the first Fiesta Bowl? Do yeah. you have any memories of it? Uh, I remember the party my parents were having in the basement of, like, everything going on. And then I remember playing against uh, – who are we played against Arizona in one of the Fiesta Bowls, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then we had they had that good the end. That the, I can't remember his name. Was it like Scoob, Scooby or something? Oh, like that? yeah. Uh, uh, Scooby Scoob. Wright? Maybe? Yeah, something like that. He was hmm. supposed to be like yeah, he, defensive finalist of college football. Yeah, he was good. So I remember watching that and stuff. So, hmm. like, I have memory of us playing and, like, just watching, like, holy crap. Like, this is top 10 team in the nation, top yeah. five. You know, we were ranked, what, fourth at the highest? <laughs> I, we got I ranked like second. Second. second yeah. Highest. yeah. So oh, it's yeah. like, you know, being a kid watching <laughs> that, it's like, okay, yeah, I want to be a part of this. Yeah. And I know we've had, like, a couple rough years, but it's like, you know, it's I pretty think, cool. Yeah, it's just you and, know, and cool rough game. is all relative, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> rough is pretty relative. So you're right now. You're a sophomore. You're a red shirt. <laughs> uh, I fr- I don't know the exact. What like are you? <laughs> definition. <laughs> I know I graduate here soon, but I still got three more years of eligibility. You do? Yeah, okay. because of COVID and then the uh, medical uh, red shirt. So yeah, I can be 28 playing. If <laughs> <laughs> Transfer to BYU. You yeah. fit right yeah. in, Leon, man. Leon said they're gonna like, or Leon said they were gonna just apply for Max to get another year. <laughs> I believe it, man. <laughs> So what? So take us That's to. Uh, and, and I know we want to get into basketball, but I'm I'm fascinated by this. I I mean, us three being local guys, um, we grew up here. Uh, you know, when we were kids, it was Idaho and you know Boise State. It was Big Sky Days a little bit, but still, I think every kid that grows up in the valley that is into sports and watches basketball goes to the pavilion. It was for me. It was more basketball. It was like yeah. going to the pavilion, watching uh, you know Jerry Washington and watching. Um, Berto play and just like you have these dreams of playing on that level 99 point whatever percent of kids never get to that level but so you get to Boise State um and then you know tell us a little bit about you go from being like I said Gatorade football basketball and now you're all of a sudden at a division one program quality division one program and you find yourself you know in the room of what 15 wide receivers or whatever and they're bouncing how what was that like uh kind of that journey yeah, it was uh, definitely a, like a awakening because when I first got to BSU, they wanted me at tight end. So I was like, I'm a 180 pound tight end. You know, <laughs> you don't really, you know, there's never those on the field. So I was like, okay, I'm usually, you know, in high school, I was able to do whatever I want because of my speed. Like I was able to just like run by anyone. Now it's like, okay, now I have guys who are 250 pounds and could, you know, mm. stride for stride almost. So <laughs> it's Oof. like, it's like, okay, this is a rude, rude awakening. Like I, you know, my usual works of just be able to run, you know, not have to move a little bit. I have to have actual good footwork. I have to have, like, good routes. I have to, you know, and then blocking at 180, you know, wasn't even really, it was really fair for yeah. me. So I was like, yeah. okay, DN see me at the three-point stance. They're looking their chops. Yes. Ready, <laughs> ready to just bull rush me. Did it, did it matter what, what position you wanted to be? I mean, tight end, wide receiver, did it, did it matter to you? No, like I said, I – I just want to play. Like, I want yeah. to make plays. I want playing. Like, you know, I even played DN, and I was excited for that. Like, I just wanted – I love playing and competing. So, it was just like, if however to get me on the field the fastest was like, I'm down for anything. So, yeah. But being able to be, like you said, like the Gatorade player of the year and stuff and being able to, like, you know, fourth and ten, everyone knows I'm running the ball and still get a first down. It's like, <laughs> okay, like, let's see how hard college is. And coming around, it's like, oh, wow, like, this is the real deal. There's like yeah. two, 300 pounders when, you know, Idaho football, you know, it's like 275 is a big guy. Now it's right. 335 <laughs> and they can run like as fast as the linebackers and stuff. So it's like, you got to definitely like the athleticism is the biggest thing. It's like, I can't just be an, a- I can just out, I can't out athlete anyone, but it's like, you have to actually have techniques and like fundamentals to actually like do what you want us to do to be like successful. Yeah. Yeah. You talked about your speed. This is one thing we didn't talk about from high school. We talked about basketball, football. Wait, track? Track. Oh. State track and field champion in 400 (laughs) meter and 4x4 relay. Yeah. Whoa, dude. Wow. That's impressive. Wait, what was your 400 time? Uh, 47. Whoa. That beats what (laughs) what we did. Yeah. We, We were also state champions, Brandon and I. Were you in track? Uh, I did track as a team. junior year. Oh, uh, well, we, yeah. I as a team. I, I, you didn't win any. I didn't win my. Uh, were you in the 4x4 relay? I was in the 4x4, two years. Yeah, state so gold, gold medals. And 4x4. Uh, let uh, race. You and yeah. Walt right now. Oh, yeah. No problem. No problem. <laughs> I think I was a 49 was the fastest split, split I ever split. ran. Was a 47 49. is That's, that's different from yeah. a 47. That's 47 alone. and not a split. Yeah, that's impressive. 47. <laughs> Man, the 400, probably the worst form of torture there is. Yeah. Horrible. No, it was horrible. I think, uh, <laughs> yeah, that was one race. Like, I was getting called for the 400 because that was my junior year because senior year we had COVID, so I didn't even get to run my senior Oh, really? Year. Oh, yeah. you were during wow. COVID? Yeah, so my senior year, like, we had state basketball, 
and then like two weeks, like a, literally the weekend after everything got shut down. Oh yeah. So uh, I didn't have track my senior year. Oh, my dude, junior. you could have beat a forty. <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh, wow. yeah. So I had a lot of colleges wow. calling for track, and I was like, not nah, happening. Like yeah. I'm not running four hundred for the next couple years of my no life. Like, every time I'm done running that race, I wanted to just sit there and cry. It <laughs> yeah, it's the worst. Like, no, like don't want to touch me. Like just yeah. let me sit here for thirty five minutes in pain. Totally. Plus, I mean, a forty, that. a forty seven. Uh, they'd probably kick you up to an eight hundred. <laughs> yeah, they were trying to. Yeah. I was, <laughs> No way! <laughs> wow, dude, oh, that's man. impressive, man. Yeah, forty-seven. Were you? That were you? Is uh, flying. And then we'll move on. But so, as far as like growing up and stuff, obviously, there's natural ability there, um, God-given natural ability there. But were you kind of? I mean, were your parents training you at a young age? I mean, you see Gatlin Bear, right? Yeah. And he's like doing all his training stuff and everything. I mean, uh, were you, you know, at a younger age going through a lot of training stuff, or how was that? Sadly, club that, sports. Sadly, not really training until I got into club basketball my ninth grade year is when you know we were doing bam jam and we were playing against this team called slam and all the parents like yeah you got to come try out for us like like you want us to play it was like them and hoop james is every time they're like come try out for us my dad's like i'm not paying that much money for like yeah basketball like like screw that and then finally my dad's like fine like slam kind of like helped like adjusted the price a little bit and we had jeff saner as the coach which is oh yeah you know very successful basketball player and coach so Besides that, it was very just buy some shoes, go out to practice, and just you know, show play, up. Yeah, Natural play backyard athlete. football. So, because <laughs> awesome. you know, nowadays, you know, I see all these people like Gatlin Bear, you yeah. know, Colson Loveland. They all had these guys like training them on routes and stuff. Like when I was uh, there, like none of that stuff was a thing. It was very new to Idaho recruiting, and everything was new. Now it's like I see all these kids getting trained, and it's like very cool, like the evolution of like. Um, Idaho recruitment and like training now because it's like I wish I had that my junior senior year besides that it was just like put on your cleats hopefully you do good on games and hopefully you can get some kind of scholarship what about fourth grade <laughs> my <laughs> kids play in seven on seven and they have like training you know through 208 platinum I don't know if yeah, you know yeah, no, uh, no. Shane Williams Rhodes and they do training you know, for like fourth the graders law firm. Yeah. They, do, they do like and it's like I'm like yeah, yeah I'm fun but like you literally can pay extra money for your fourth, yeah, third, yeah, fourth yeah. grader and train. I'm like, I mean. That's not bad. No, that's it's not just, bad. It, but it, it's, it's just crazy. It's, it's not, just crazy how it's changed. As yeah. long as it's not one, just make, because the, the fear that I have is just, is they push you into just doing one sport. Right. Yeah. No, that's, I was talking to, because I ref some of those, uh, Shane Hits Us Up or uh-huh. uh, Sean Monster, because he yeah, runs yeah. the whole they, kingdom yeah. thing. Yeah. So I was there. It's Were you there Saturday. today? I was not today. I was there okay. Saturday from eight to one. Um in the back judge and uh but yeah they a lot of those players i'm asking like, i didn't see you playing basketball this year like what's like what's going on he's like yeah, i just want to focus on football and it's like for me i feel like me playing you know three four sports in high school was like the best thing that happened to me when it comes to like you know just being yeah. like naturally gifted and like having good footwork and you know basketball helps with football i think so yeah that's my perspective. I know there's probably other people that are yeah. probably going to shut up because, you know, they think one sport's like you need to focus on one sport. But I've read and, and I've seen both sides of that. You know, you're obviously a natural athlete. So the, the ar- counter argument to what you just said is like, well, he's a natural athlete. He's a Division One athlete, and maybe my kid isn't, so my kid needs to focus on one. So I've seen both. But yeah. generally speaking, you hear coaches talk about it, and you hear, I mean, the research would actually show that especially early on through middle school, uh, multi-sport athletes is definitely better. But... Anyways. I mean, because what? How many people make it to Division One? Yeah, not not many. I don't know numbers what wise, but one percent. Yeah, out of high maybe. schools no, of, of Division One. Yeah, probably less than that if you really think about it. So I mean, all the participation. Yeah, I don't know. Anyways, okay. <coughs> well, thank you for coming, Austin. We're gonna get your opinions on what on basketball. Can we talk? What do we? Can we talk basketball? Yes. You ask that every time, like we're not gonna do it. Well, <laughs> we're yes, gonna we do can't it. Talk Start basketball. with it. <laughs> we're here. We're already started. Ken, how, how do you feel? What do you mean? How do you feel about what? The well, super, last super last week, last week hey. was an up and down week. It was. Oh. Yeah. Well, and we so lost the first game, right? And then Tuesday night, San Diego State, man. Yeah, it was awesome. Feel so good. You, We're in now. Okay. We're in. Yeah. We're in. Don't, I mean, to, and so we I'll don't say have to win a game we, in the tournament. No, right can now. I? Say I've it said it, West. and I've said it multiple times. Like being a fan. Now, I'm not want to speak for the players. The players out there, they want to win a championship, whether that be a regular season or a conference championship, because they have that the rest of their lives. For a fan, for a 39-year-old fan, for me, it's it's time to win a, a, a tournament game, right? So I'm excited because we're in the tournament, 
And ideally, you win a couple. And I mean, it's about seeding. It's about matchups. And it's about playing well one day on a Thursday or Friday in March, right? To win one game. But I, I've been saying the whole time, like I, I think people were saying we're in, we're in, we're in. But it could have gone either way there for a while. But they played great. That San Diego State game was yeah. Can we talk awesome. about the San Diego State? Let's talk game. about it. Amazing. Did you watch it, Austin? You watched the game? Uh, I watched a little bit of it. It was crazy game. Too late. <laughs> yeah, it was, I, it was. It was late, but it was crazy. Yeah. <laughs> um. I struggle in watching those games. Like too much. I had just a Jerry. lot of anxiety. Yeah. So it's like just my, keep it off. My 12-year-old son was like, sit down, Dad. Like I'm jumping up. <laughs> I'm getting like, pumped. I'm high-fiving. I, I, and he's I guess, like, dude, just sit down. Yeah, just watch it. Uh, so I just like have it on my phone. And then I tell my 10-year-old, I'm trying to look up what our projected seed is. It's all over the place. But, but we're, I, we're a three in the Mountain West tournament. Yeah. And... Uh, who do we play? Okay. We play either New Mexico or New Mexico. Air Force. Yeah. yeah, the winner of New Mexico. Winner of New Mexico, Air Force. Air Force. Probably New Mexico. Probably yeah, New, Mexico. New Mexico. They didn't have Mashburn. I watched that game last night too. Okay. Yeah, I've never no, watched this not? much Mountain West why? basketball. Was he injured? He's. They said he had a sickness, an illness. Ooh. Okay. So, um, but, well, while we're while we're digging that up, I, I posted three crazy, well, critical plays on Twitter. Mm-hmm. Okay. Roddy's layup to push us. Well. Wasn't a layup, but inside shot. Floater to Floater get, yeah. to get us to OT. Somebody else brought up Buzo's three to tie it. At yeah, 70. that was good. That's huge. Yeah, huge that was good. three, which they said he got fouled on. I, which he did. He did. He got his yeah. elbow. Um, we got Max Rice's moonshot. <laughs> the best part about <laughs> that, that was crazy. the best part about that was in our text group. Matt's like. Max Rice from the logo. <laughs> That's how we win this overtime. But he said air ball from the logo or no, something? No, I said with 10 seconds left. Oh, Maybe I then, didn't say air ball. Sorry, you, Max. You, <laughs> and then he did it. We're like, dude, you dude, nailed it. You called it? He nailed it. Well, I, I called uh, it differently. Of, but, uh, yeah. but those types of shots from Max, it's like that kind of shot, maybe a little closer, could just come in the regular flow of the offense, right? <laughs> <laughs> he just pulls up and chucks it. That one was a little yeah, deeper, cool. but man. Crazy shot. The thing about it is, like, this team. And Cam Martin. Cam Martin's yeah. free oh, throws. Right. And his finish. His Yeah, he he got a put back. Yeah, he scored, I think, uh, four. Good game. Yeah. Dude, and the block at the end was just icing on the cake. Yeah. Dude, I don't know why you blocked that. Like, honestly. You I definitely that, like, don't want to foul. <laughs> you definitely don't want to foul, but. Like, I couldn't imagine. I mean, he kind of He just swatted it. Yeah, he didn't just put his arm up. Right there. <laughs> like, well, it was a volleyball spot. Um, <laughs> can, I, can I bring up a conspiracy? Do you guys oh, mind? We're already, that's a little early for I that. I know, like, hey, might ask, as well. Okay. Hey, I got some caffeine. A- ask Austin. He's our guest. Oof. How do you feel about it? Do you... <laughs> who do you... Did you take the COVID shot? <laughs> no, let's not How go there. How political do you want let's to go? Let's not go there. So here's the deal. Uh, ESPN has us at a 10. As a, no, at a 9. As a 9. I don't like eight, that. 8, 9. That's ridiculous. As an 8, 9. Okay. And they've always had us at a little bit higher. CBS has us as a 7 seed. Seven ten. That's a big range. Just four per. That's like a twelve team. Difference. Here's my point. Does ESPN penalize teams yes. that don't play yes. on their 100%. network? Yes, hundred percent. I think, I think do, so, big man. time. I think they do. Look at the coverage for the football team, man. They, yes, of course, that was when we were top ten and whatever. We we're getting a lot of coverage, but we don't have an, a deal with ESPN anymore. You rarely see stuff on the Mountain West teams. Now, granted, the Mountain West has been no offense, but the Mountain West has been a little. Down the last years as far as having a, a highly ranked team. But I think that is 100%. I mean, what you're going to put it past ESPN. ESPN and Fox basically I have... how Mark's have, into this conspiracy. No, this, this is were, not a conspiracy. This is real. Football, man. They've ruined... The, dude, they've tore apart the Pac-12. Who? Who? ESPN? Fox and ESPN. Oh, they, I mean, all of these conference realignment, most of it has to do with TV money and dollars. And you know they're behind the door saying, well, if you, if we get, you, if you get USC mm. and UCLA, well, let's bring over Washington and Oregon... So would it put would it, would you put it past them to say hey we have contracts with these leagues we're gonna kind of you know feed them a little bit more as far as attention and whatnot I don't think that's a conspiracy at all in fact I think that's mm. as close to fact as you can get <laughs> Austin <laughs> you know, back me up here well, what do you, you know, think <laughs> well hey what do you think you know yeah. what we're talking about at all yeah no I agree I think that there's definitely like especially when it comes to March Madness like the team that they've been you know showing all year they want them to have the Best wi- like best chance to win the whole thing. Yeah. So I think Gatorade put, gets it. I think they're going to put them for, for sure, like yep. in the best position to kind of get their way to the you know the lead eight, final four, and say they had you know let's say like fifty percent of the lead eights. That would suck yeah. if they even got yeah. rigged. No, we're not saying rigged. I'm not saying rigged. I just it think that just, they the sucks. coverage and, and benefits. Yeah, it just sucks yes. that 
you look at it and you're like, okay, you can just pick the teams because they have a contract that are most likely going to make it. And you're like, nah, it just doesn't feel good. Yeah. You know, I don't know. You'd like to think that the selection committee, I think Leon, listening to Leon, I think he thinks that that they're going to be better seated than the You know what was the worst? I mean, because San Diego State's projected what? They were a a a three-four and then they just lost two. They were projected to be a four. Sorry. They were projected to be a four like two weeks ago. And then, like, we're projected to be an 8, 9, 10, and we beat them twice, and we have the same record? Like, how is that? You know, they lost to Grand Canyon. Who? San Diego State? Yes. (laughs) Did they really? Yes. That was a long time ago, right? Grand Canyon's not bad, but it's just like, come on. Um, I... I don't know where where San Diego State on this. I think they're yeah they're a six seed in the CDS. Yeah, you were a seven right. seed. I like that. You know what was the worst that. year? The the worst year by far Dayton, was the Dayton. year. Dayton. Dayton. Oh, it, it doesn't get worse than that. playing an away game in the- at the home at the home. Yeah. Okay, that's true. Um, the worst was when we won with uh, <laughs> Kijab and Acot. This was a couple years ago. Was you it remember? Against, was it against Memphis? When we yeah. Played yes. Memphis the first yeah. Yes. That was the worst, dude. Because everybody was projecting us as a six, and, and they, then we got the eight nine yeah. against Memphis, and it they were good. like so and good. Was, and they, were, they put uh, us over in Portland, and if we won, we would have played Gonzaga. Gonzaga. And it was kind of like this whole like, oh, well, feel we'll, good we'll, story. Yeah, we're we'll, like, no, that's not a feel good story. No. <laughs> we don't want. And Memphis, that, they had like lost a bunch of games early on. And then yeah, they had one like went on a you tear. know huge tear at the end of the year. And it was beat Gonzaga too for a little bit. There. Yeah, so it had yeah, on the ropes that kind sucked. of. Yes, it, yeah, that sucked. Seating, especially when we, they when they were showing the team when they got the selection, and they're like, "Oh, Boise State eight seed plays Memphis." And was like, "Oh, yeah, <laughs> that's <laughs> great." If they yeah, play in Salt great. Lake, are you guys going? Oh yeah, you'll go. Oh, hundred percent. I would. I would love. I love that's spring break. <sighs> I don't know. Do you have, oh, a, do you, really? do you have, have some a, time? Dude, I'm fun. taking time. Like, yeah, I don't know. Do you have a schedule-wise. pool party to go to? Is that? I have a pool party to go to this weekend. This, this week. week. Mark will be swimming with BJ Rains. Yeah, dude. Yeah, me and Johnny. That. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm going to be in Vegas. I'm going to Vegas. And so, yeah, I think I'm going to go to the party. That, Thanks. um. Yeah. No, well, I got, so we got the, yeah. I think I'm going to go. All well, right. Your, I'll your, report your back. Your daughter's not. I'm there for a soccer tournament. They have a game at like one. So the pool party goes from like ten to five. So right it's in between. So I just gotta only. figure out. Right. So I gotta figure out something to do with her. Go over there for a couple hours, get to the game. I'll make it there. Is your wife gone? No. 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 My favorite time of the year is that Thursday, Friday, March Madness. The opening round. The opening yeah. round. Yes. hundred yeah. percent. Like okay. like at every job I've worked at, in fact, we had a job when I was working at oh, what was it called? Super value. You that owned, I worked at Super Valley. I got, really? I got down. Albertsons? <laughs> he, he was a cashier. <laughs> no, Albertsons. No. I sat there and I stared at Excel. Don't be excited to graduate. Yeah. <laughs> FYI. Like, there's not a lot. So I. Uh, <laughs> Those three I, years that you have. <laughs> you cherish like, them. <laughs> yeah. Get a couple degrees. I did. Uh, what was it? It was an internship at Super Value, you know, down at Park Center where um, Albertsons, they mm-hmm. owned Albertsons at the time. And it was all Excel spreadsheets like all day long. You're a Six Sigma guy, right? Six Sigma. Yeah. It was, it was not fun. It was a lot of, like, my nose would, like, bleed my brain out. <laughs> but they wouldn't let us watch anything. That, like, they would, they, like, shut down the IP addresses, and they were, like, and they're, like, hey, this is a big deal. And Can't so. Watch the tournament. I was, like, this is America, baby. I'm sick. <laughs> oh. I'm calling in sick. Like that was the best. I don't know those that opening weekend that Thursday Friday. There's like no the statute best. of limitations on that, is there? They can't like go back, call you back, charge me, like, hey, fire me. You again? were really sick. <laughs> They're gonna fire me again. <laughs> Actually, Super Value. Um, they bought Albertsons for eight billion, um, and then they sold it back to Albertsons LLC for one billion. That's not. That doesn't great. sound. Yeah, I'm not good, good at math. I did. A lot of it was due to uh, their March Madness, their stance on March Madness. (laughs) (laughs) No, like uh, like, come back to get you. If they play in Salt Lake, which I hope they do, yeah, ah, that that would be a blast, dude. Like especially if we get a seven seed. Maybe we go. I don't know. That's spring break. That's spring break, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. You don't have any plans for spring break right now. That's a problem. Way to go, Dad. You have a way to go, Dad. I have some what? I have some work meetings. Anyway, we'll figure it out. I want to go. I would would like to go go too. Especially Salt Lake. That'd be sweet. That would be sweet. Cool. Somebody told me that if you call, like, the smaller teams that are playing. Mm, get some of their tickets. And you get their tickets. Oh, yeah. 
Maybe. Okay. Maybe. Anyway. Okay. This so, would be sweet. This is the year win one March Madness game. Yeah. We're 0 for what? 0 for 9? 9. Over. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I hate that graphic, dude. What? Every time. Most most times to turn without a win. Boise State. We're one out of 363. Like, what are the chances of that, dude? That's <laughs> I want that graphic uh, to go away. Austin, so bad. could you play on this team? Oh. Uh, yeah, I think I could. Whoa, yeah, okay. Could. Wow. Yeah. How tall I, okay. are you? 6'4". Six, 6'4". Four. Six, four. Yeah, and no, I uh, actually, not a lot of people know about this, but... Uh, well, was it the second year of COVID? I was playing on the basketball team, and Max Rice was actually uh, texting me to come play for like, because we were shut down for like two months. This is the summer after like the huge COVID sweep, and then uh, I actually got a spot on the team, and then uh, I, got, I got shut. Yeah, Avalo shut that down real quick. Oh, he did. Yeah, Avalos. Leon, Leon and then kind of went and talked to them. We had like I was like you know meeting outside like no way yeah like around the university with like the assistant coach. Max was talking to me about it. Like they're all trying to get me to play, and then because Max did he play at BK when you were yeah. at when you were at Bora? Yeah, yeah. So I played against him my freshman and sophomore year. Yeah, and that's when he graduated. Was I think his he was a senior when I was a sophomore. Okay. So yeah, huh. so I had a I had an opportunity to play. Uh, Max was pushing for it a lot. Uh, all Whoa. the coaches were on. Like I was having meetings with like the the assistant. You know, That'd all be the coaches. Sweet. Yeah, I was going in and playing for like a sh- month straight with the basketball team, and I was doing pretty good against rebounding, scoring, and playing defense. So Max is like, "Yeah, you should be playing for us. And I, was like, <laughs> I think you can come off. Like you could actually play good minutes for our team." And then <laughs> Avalos kind of shot that down right when. Avalos, so right when don't so speak poorly about Avalos. Okay, he's <laughs> our, about? he's only gotten roses around here oh, from yeah, us. Right. Okay. <laughs> That's that's late, man. Yeah, that's so, uh, so that you have three years of eligibility left. Yeah. If football is like, hey, I'm ready to do something uh, different, <laughs> use them for basketball. Max is gonna no, be gone. You could, wait, could you? Could yeah. you? You could. Yeah, you could always just switch over. So like a lot yeah. of times for us, we have a uh, we have guys on the track team that comes plays football. Right, they, like, just walk on and play football. All right. So, you know, fast corner and DB for scout team, but like yeah. we have a Ooh, couple that guys. Makes sense. Yeah, so we have a couple guys from track that usually comes over each year. Uh, really? Yeah. Huh. You know that? You, yeah. Uh, were you number thirty two in high school? Yeah. Yeah. Is anybody on the team thirty two right now? Basketball. Just wondering if it's open. On oh, the, it's open. It's open because right? that's the biggest thing. Carl yeah. Malone, man. Because yeah. he, he's like, if it's not open, I'm not playing. What's your What's your football <laughs> number? Eighty one. Eighty one. Yeah. Still eighty one. Yeah. This year. Yeah. Guys trade those numbers around quite a bit, don't they? they do. Some some of the guys do. Yeah, they do. I, I'm sticking with 81. Uh, Lions fan, Det- ah, Megatron. Yeah, Megatron. Oh, baby. dude, yeah. Bora Lion, and he's wearing a Detroit Lions sweater. Yeah, I'm a Lions fan, so that's how <laughs> I became a Lions fan because of Megatron. So, oh, oh nice. Yeah. It works, dude. Megatron, he's probably top top. My kids were having this debate: best NFL receiver of all time, and it's Jerry. Megatron. Well, Jerry, yes, but like. Megatron was up there, dude. If he had oh, yeah. a good team, he probably could he have just, done He just, he retired pretty done young. Yeah. Did he played like seven, eight years. Yeah. Dude, yeah. how long I'm, can you play in Detroit when they're as bad as they are? They were <laughs> bad. They were really They'll bad. stick around. It's too bad he left. Now they're good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Talking about jersey swaps, uh, didn't Caples get a new number? I th- yeah, I think he's... Wasn't he number seven? And yeah, now no, he's three, I think. He's three? Three, three I'm pretty Malachi's sure. Malachi's. Because Malachi's Let's seven, talk, right? Let's talk... Well, let's can I see. can I follow go up ahead. Okay, before we go to that? Yeah. Does it? I'm just wondering. Does it matter if you're Avalos? Does it matter to have like a wide receiver playing basketball? It's probably just an injury thing. Injury. Right? That's what he said. Yeah. He's like, I'm not paying for you to tear your knee on the basketball court because they're paying for my school football. That's wasting their scholarship. Yeah. So uh, it would not be basketball paying for like the surgeries or anything. It would be football and stuff. So he's like, I'm not paying you, and I don't want to have a risk of you getting injured. So. And you wouldn't have – would you have been offered a scholarship for basketball? Uh, you can't get double scholarship, so that would be technically a walk-on. So okay. I'd still be on the football scholarship, mm. just playing both sports. Mm. So we – Austin's the first current player we've had with us. So we want to we want to definitely utilize that. But before okay. we get into this coming year, <laughs> what right? Do we, what do we do? <laughs> well, I wanna, yeah, you, you know, I want to talk to him about, you know, some inside information, like, right? <laughs> He's going to tell us all the secrets to all of our 12 listeners. But – um. No, before we get into this coming year, because everyone's super excited about it, obviously, but um, last year, right? Conference championship. Tell Just tell us, a, just that year, we've talked about it for hours. Fans are talking about it, just the crazy roller coaster that it was. You were on the inside uh, from the get-go, from the beginning to the end. Um, sum, up, sum up last year a little how, bit for How us. wild was it? Uh, <laughs> it was crazy. Uh, it just... 
I don't know. It's weird. It showed like the resilience of the team because yeah. like we lose that we lose at Fresno State. There's about a five percent chance we even make it to the Mountain West yeah, Championship. Yeah, yeah. Like you know, V or what was it? You know, no, it was New Mexico had to pull up some crazy upset <laughs> yeah. against yeah. Fresno State. Yeah. yeah, you know all these There's things. A couple that, things. You know, you're not expected had to happen to make us actually make it. And next, you know, you see it's like, well, we beat. I think you we beat New Mexico, and we go and play on the road at. I Utah State? Utah State, and we come back, and next thing you know, it's like New Mexico's, New Mexico's up right now, and like, oh, crap, like, they're up 10 with five minutes left. And like, so we're all, like, on the plane and, like, the bus, like, all stream Easting, like, illegal streaming this stuff to start <laughs> watching this. <laughs> and it's like, we're all, like, looking at it, and it's like, oh, crap, like, this stuff's happening. And it's like, oh, wow, so Utah State loses. And then we had to have, what, like, San Jose not beat – I think it was San Diego State because San, San Jose and something ha- beat. There was some tiebreaker stuff, something. yeah. There was something. So we needed San Jose to lose to San Diego State, which San Diego State finished like. They really struggled at the end of the year. Five and nine throughout yeah. the season. So I was like, well, that's still something. That's, and then San Jose loses to San Diego State or something like mm-hmm. that. Some crazy tiebreaker again happens. It's like, well, we're here now. <laughs> So then we play against UNLV, and that's when we had, you know, we had we were on the Danielson, you know, everyone's on the Danielson high, so everyone's, you know, beat them by 20. Was there a significant difference from, like, the coaching change? Uh, yes. The confidence that the players had from Danielson and, like, the freedom we had, it's just everyone was actually playing, just cut it loose. Like, really? Yeah. It, you can just tell, like, well, we, you know, Avalos' last game was New Mexico, which, you know, we crushed New yeah. Mexico and stuff, so, as you know. You didn't think anything was going to happen. You know, if anything, you thought he'd get fired after a loss. Right, like right, Colorado right, State right. game when we come back. Yeah. And it was a 20-point lead. So at, that the, was State. at the time, it was like, from the outside, ev- the word was a lot of people are going to leave. Yeah. Like, from inside the program. Yeah, I think there was a good amount of people leaving. I think yeah. Jen, if Danielson wasn't head coach, I don't think Ashton's here. Yeah. I think he had a huge role with uh, Danielson being here. But, yeah, yeah you know, we – Come back the next morning, and, you know, we don't have to be at the f- football facility after a game after, like, I think it's, like, 1 o'clock. So, you know, my alarm's set for 12. And next, you know, I get woken up by, like, 15 missed phone calls yeah. for, like, 10 a.m., <laughs> 9 a.m. It's like, we need everyone to come to the facility right now. Mm-hmm. So I'm thinking it's just, like, maybe we already fa- – like, we f- I don't know. I was like, okay, whatever. So maybe big time's transferring, like, midseason that we're talking about. Next EMAC year. had just transferred, like, two weeks before. Well, he right? just announced, he announced yeah. it. Yeah. 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 yeah, so I thought maybe, like – you know, maybe one of our quarterbacks, you know, something was happening big. Yeah. I didn't think it was like a complete, like, our head coach was gone due to the fact that we just had a big win. <laughs> or like, a, you know, we <laughs> smoked New Mexico. So I was like, what? That happened. And everyone was kind of like, okay. And then right when Danielson got the job, everyone was kind of like, like, right right on. Like, this is the guy everyone yeah. wants to follow because the confidence and like the belief he has in us. And it's just like, this is football. Like, I want you guys to cut loose and play like for fun, not play like you're going to, like, if you do something, you're going to get benched. You're going to bench. Is that. What it was before? There was some was fear. It? There was some fear in some players for sure yeah. when it was like playing for that. So like, I mean, our defense wasn't doing the best that season. And then right, right when Danielson came in, you know, Utah State was a top fifteen offense scoring wise, and we held uh. them to ten points. So it's like, you know, Danielson just br- brought in like the confidence and like back into everyone and kind of like played like free and like that's all I can care. Like if you guys play one hundred percent, like I can correct, you know, if you guys blow Other a coverage. Stuff. Not. Yeah, and have you felt that confidence just continue to grow through the oh. off season? Yeah, just ways he does like the way he th- does things. It's like he emphasizes like I'm not doing this for my beneficial. Like this is not me. Like this is for you guys. Like everything I'm trying to make decision wise, like how I make you guys work out, how long I want you at the facility. It's like for you guys. So like you know our practices would be from you know in the morning from like. Oh, like eight to one almost. So Daniels, like it was almost a four-hour practice with our with Avalos. Now Danielson's cut it down to like a legit two-hour practice, like mm. two hour. So twenty-hour rule wasn't exactly. It wasn't. It wasn't uh, abided. Well, we I mean, on the on the <laughs> website, <laughs> on, on like the little app we have, it was yeah. abided, but yeah, 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 out yeah. There wasn't. That's probably not <laughs> uncommon. Let's be clear. Yeah, That's probably no, it, very common. It, around, so I just I'm just so fascinated by Avalos because he's been around for forever. And he seemed super beloved when he came in. Yeah. You know? Everyone was excited. He got the job and, like, the, the I community. I if he was under a ton of stress. I think, well, I don't know. I don't want to speak for him, but it seemed like that, you know? Like, started losing, started losing. And then, like, like you're stressed and you're like, man, well, and yeah, and he's flashed out. I don't know. Is that, I don't want to put you on the spot, but it seemed from the outside that 
And that can happen at any job, right? Someone gets a CEO job and they're under a ton of stress and something doesn't go right. And then there's more stress and more stress and, and things can yeah. get, just get off the rails sometimes. It, it just felt like with the announcement of Danielson being the head coach that there was, I think what Austin's saying, like maybe a, a, a sense of relief or like, hey, there's more freedom here. We can, you know, be who we are. We can play hard. We don't have to have that fear. Um, that was kind of the perception I got yeah. from the outside. Like, yeah. hey, these guys are pumped. Uh, they can just cut it loose and run with it and go. And that's how it's felt. And that's how it's looked. And it seems like Danielson just continues to build. I mean, this offseason. He hasn't missed. He hasn't missed. <laughs> no. I mean, we get. That's impressive. We get Malachi. We get. Um, cool. Cutter. A couple. Cutter. Cutter. Marshall. Right? Yeah, a couple receivers. That D, another DB. Yeah, t- getting some guys. Not to take away from the guys that are already Not that there. We no. need been there for a while. <laughs> but that's exciting yeah. stuff. It is. Have you. Uh, so leading into. Uh, well, first of all. The UNLV game, and we've talked about it a little bit. That game was, that was a vintage Boise State offensive. That performance, was right. Was, Did you yeah. guys? I mean, from the out, from as fans, it was like that's it. That's yeah. the you know. Did it feel when you were playing that? Was that like we're rolling? Like they can't stop it. Was that just yeah. like the best feeling ever? Yeah, no. It was <laughs> like it was basically like you know we had you know we had that one pick six that yeah right. the besides yeah. that it was like everything Perfect. was clicking yeah. Like yeah we were getting eight yards of carry it felt yeah. like every play was a big explosive play like we were doing trick plays play actions yeah. like not only that like it seemed like they started finally getting the ball around yeah <laughs> uh, was he know, the flea flicker was that yeah. for you yeah yeah, yeah. That was awesome. and, and he had a you had a couple really good plays yeah. that game and not just like at the start of the year it just seemed like emac throw it to emac on the <laughs> sideline emac on the screen it's like okay look like you know, okay, anyway, but it just seemed like finally we started just getting the ball around. Yeah, no, it was it was definitely, it felt good. Like, the confidence, like I said, it was instead of getting the ball to Ashton and Emac, it yeah. was kind of like Billy had a couple nice catches. <laughs> Riley had a good yeah. screen to kind of start the game off. Yeah. Like, I think the first drive he had, like, a 30-yard screen yeah, as yeah, a yeah. tight end. Yep. Louder had a touchdown. Yeah. Like, we just had a bunch of guys, you know, doing their part and – you know, it was it was definitely it felt more of like a vintage, you know, BSU performance, especially when it comes to defense too. We had I think three picks, two or three picks. Ooh, yeah. We had really you know good. we it was just it felt like it was just, you know, we were untouchable out there. Yeah. Like it was just it was the confidence. Really fun to watch. Yeah. I mean yeah. you can tell. It's like yeah. when you see that and like this feels like old Boise State, it's like that's what it was. That's what you want as yep. a fan, right? Yeah. Yep. And and I assume as a player too, it yeah. felt just awesome. So leading into this year, right? So how much? Oh, go ahead. I actually have a question. Yeah, go ahead. Um, the reality of coaches in college football. Do you guys talk about it very much? Um, the like, rea- no. like for example, off like coordinators coming and going, and you know, like you could have been recruited by a coordinator we had three years ago or something. Like, yeah, you know, four coordinators ago, probably four yeah. coordinators. Yeah, and you know, so when when you're going out to like when these guys are going out to high school players, it's essentially they're not that coordinator is not going to be no there. way. Yeah, no. It's I mean, that's, what's that's it like being a player? Though. And just do you guys? Yeah, do you talk about it amongst your play amongst your teammates? Like these guys might know. not be here next year. Like, is is that a conversation, or do you just head well, that, down and play? The hard part about it is if if a coordinator comes over and he's like, "Dude, awesome! Like, we're gonna get you the ball, whatever, fifteen times a game or ten times a game," and then he leaves in two years, and then the offense changes. That's kind of depressing. <laughs> well, yeah. tell us. I mean, what, I what's know. it like being a player and seeing yeah. a coordinator? You've seen a bunch of them, right? Come many, and go. How many what's coordinators it like? have you been with? Five now, I think. So <laughs> I think every year I've been here has been a new coordinator. So I've had, who was it? Plow. Plow No, one before, point, right? plow. before Plow. Before Plow. So I had Harson as the head coach with. Uh, was it was Hill? It? No. no. Who was, was with? Uh, oh, Kisa. Kisa. So it was Kisa. I don't even know who that I'm guy God, is. I know his coach. He was our receiver coach with Hill. Hill left Arizona. Kisa got the OC job. They all left, and then we had was it, I think it was Plow, right? Plow. Andy and Plow. Plow. So Plow was coming back for a second year, got canned for you know the first after the third game. Yeah, UTEP game. Yeah, right. then we had Cutter. So number three. <laughs> so yeah, three right there, and then we had Bush, Bush for another. So that's four, and then now and Cutter, Cutter again, again for five, I guess. So four, four years, four, four, four. four so four. what's that like though? And then we want to talk about Cutter and stuff, but just like. Knowing that these guys, you know, they they've talked to you about coming to Boise State and whatever, and a lot of your pl- your teammates. I don't know about you, but I'm sure you had other offers. But a lot Ashton, some of these other guys have these other offers, bigger schools, more money, whatever. And then to see your coaches kind of sell you on that, and then they turn and take more yeah, money, yeah. right? Is that what's yeah. it like being a player? It's weird because like the funny thing is, is Bush 
he was at UW when I was in high school, so he was recruiting me there. So I was like, Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, so I was like, was Bush? It was Bush and Coach Pete. So I was like, Okay, that's you know having Coach <laughs> Pete. You know, I want him. Yeah. To, yeah. So then I was like, Okay, I'm going to BSU, and then you know I come back from my injury, and it's like, Well, Bush is on new OC. So I was like, Oh, sweet. Like, I love this guy, yeah. but yeah, like I said before, even Bush leaving this year is like this is my first healthy year as a receiver again. So it was like, he kind of said a lot of things and him leaving, it's just kind of like, Oh crap. Like yeah. what if we get some dude who has completely different offense and has different visions? It's like, well now I'm, you know, I don't know why I'm going to see in this guy's playbook, but it is definitely something that like when it happens, you just gotta like, I don't know. It's kind of like you gotta just worry on yourself. Cause you know, at practice is the only way you can actually get your spot back. So my, most of the thoughts are just like whoever comes in, you just got to do what you do at yeah. practice to kind of get that trust you had with that old OC or head coach. So that's kind of how I think of it. You know, some other guys I think probably think about kind of the same. Maybe some guys get a little more butt hurt, but it's just like, I don't know. It's just, at the end of the day, you got to realize college football is more of a business for these schools slash coaches. It's, you know, I want money for my family and myself. It's yeah. not going to be, I'm going to take a huge pay cut to stay with the like players I trust, like I've had. So it's kind of a business, I honestly, yeah. especially with yeah. NIL. But it's just hard, yeah. though, because, like, I think of coaches as, like, a mentor. Mm -hmm. Like, that's – the coach that we had was, like, such – like, if I saw him today, I'd be intimidated again. <laughs> <laughs> like, they're just, like, a yeah. mentor. They're, like, such a big part of your growing up. Yeah. You know, and you, you like, do everything just to get playing. I mean, I wasn't as good as you. <laughs> so, it's, like, I did everything I could just to get playing time. And so you're trying to play to this coach. And so you're, you're kind of emotionally tied to these figures on a team. Like, hey, they're – and so the coming and going could almost feel like a parental relationship in a way where you're like, hey, they're a huge mentor. They're a big part of my life. And they leave and they come here and they go there. Am I the only one that thinks that? I way? don't know. Well, I don't know. No, we I haven't – but – Sounds like they, know, compart so saying, like they compartmentalize pretty – I mean, it sounds like the players do – Pretty decent job yeah. of compartmentalizing I mean, you realizing this is what it is. You yeah. have to so, know. Because yeah. Dirk's only he's gonna only guaranteed for a year. Yeah. He may not stay, we don't know. so you gotta yeah. Yeah, no, but tell us how stoked you are about Dirk. Yeah. Because no, we're stoked. Are yeah, you stoked? Yeah. yeah, so when he can't come on and be like, nah, I'm super <laughs> nah, mad. <laughs> Dirk <laughs> sucks. When, when, dude. when Bush left, like I said, I was like kinda like, Oh sh like I don't know what I'm gonna do yeah. now. Cause like like I said, we had conversations, he called me and stuff and was like, Okay, like he has a pretty good plan for me this year. So I was like, Oh crap, like yeah. Who else, like, who else is going to be this guy to, like, call plays, like, for this team? And, like, I don't know if he's going to like me like Bush did. Luckily, it was Dirk who, you know, he's the one that instilled, like, the most confidence of me when I was, like, transitioning from tight end, D end to receiver at BSU. So it was, like, having him come back and be the guy calling plays, like, he already ta he talked to me and he was like, I'm excited for, the, like, to finally work for you. Because when he was OC, um, I broke my leg like the first game of that season when he came and mm. it was a temporary OC. So he, you know, he texted me and gave me a couple books and was like, screw you for not like being here. Like, you know, I can <laughs> use you for the season right now. <laughs> so it's kind of cool having him back in the mix and like kind of like how everything kind of just rotates back around. And like I said, he NFL coach, so he's a lot of knowledge too. Yeah. So yeah. having him back. But like the thing that everyone likes about Danielson, he's been at the BSU for I think seven years now, yeah. seven, eight years. So yeah. it's like, he loves this place. It's not like, you know, every coach that comes in is like, I love Boise State, and then they get another offer, and they just yeah. leave take it away. Off. It's like he's actually shown mm -hmm. it. He's probably could have got a job offer from different places after yeah. this last little BSU run he had. Mm -hmm. But he sta stayed here, and it's like it shows, like, he actually, like, does have that relationship you can have with the coach that actually means that he actually, like, cares and, like, trusts and loves you, that he wants you to actually, like, stay at this place. Because that was his biggest thing. Like, he wanted everyone to stay here as much, like, as many as possible. It looked like it worked. Yeah. Yeah, yeah there was hardly Not any transfers. Guys. I yeah. think, like, yeah. two maybe. Yeah. yeah. That's pretty good. So, I'm going to ask you a question. You don't have to answer this one. But I remember back in the Coach Pete days when they were highly ranked teams and we were – fans and media was always asking about, like – getting to a BCS bowl. And that was always the, the goal from the outside. But he was always very like, you know, control, we can control, win our conference, win the game in front of us, right? Which that's obviously how you have to look at it. But we're here, we're talking on this show, fans are out there talking like this expanded playoff, the 12-team playoff. Yeah. I mean, and from the outside looking at even some, a lot of the national guys, it's, hey, Boise State can be a group of five contender type thing. On the inside, is that something that you guys... I mean, obviously, you know it's there. Is that something you talk about? Is that a goal? Is that the top of the pyramid, or is that just leave it, leave it at there? What, what is that? Yeah. Is that any conversation with you guys? Yeah, there's something. So, like on our team room, it's like 
we're going to win a Mountain West championship in a bowl game with class integrity and academic excellence. So it's like the last time I think they did that was Leighton Van Der Esch against Oregon. Yeah. Um, what was that, 2013? Uh, 2014, 17, 17? Something like that. Yeah, Maybe it's so been a few it's years. It's years, been a while. Seven years ago almost. So yeah. We've talked about now it's like, well, now there's a whole new aspect of college football. It's like we want to win our Mountain West. So if we do that, you know, our next shot of being a bowl game is, you know, could be a – 12 playoff. Playoff, play, 12 team playoff game. So we've talked about that now. Like, we've talked about that. It's like, we got to do what we got to do. You know, we played Georgia Southern and Oregon, you know, as our first, you know, with Oregon, if we beat or we have a good, like, you know, it's a good game, like, that's going to give us a sh- good shot if we went out the Mountain West no to doubt. actually make the playoffs. So it's like, we've definitely, you know, Danielson's definitely brought up, like, hey, like, I'm not going to, like, sugarcoat this. Like, we want to win the Mountain West, but we also want to be the team in, like, one of those 12 teams in that playoffs. And yeah. he's like, I, like I think with the team we have, you know, we have a whole routine. We have four of our five offensive linemen coming back, which I think we had three of those guys all in the Mountain West honors. Yeah. So I think mm. we have a solid team. We have, you know, I say the best running back in the nation, Ashton. We have a five-star quarterback. I like Mad Dog. He's a good quarterback so if, he, if his yeah. knee gets back. And we have receivers from, you know, the Big Ten and a five-star coming in too. So I think we got a team that we can actually, you know, Compete. accomplish those goals and actually, you know, compete against Oregon and play in those playoffs. Yeah. That's – it's exciting. It's an exciting year. I believe it. Tell, I believe it. Man, don't, don't need to sell us. What about, uh, obviously, you're not, we're not going to ask you to, to take a vote here, but like, so, you know, it's just similar with you, right? You're a receiver. You had a good end of the year. You started getting some more playing time once EMAC left, basically, yeah. seemed like. Um, and then, the, you know, obviously, you need six, seven deep receivers, yeah. right? So, you know, that you lost a few. They're bringing in some new guys, right? Um, same thing at the quarterback position, right? Mad Dog had a decent year. Uh, they bring in Malachi, right? Uh, being a receiver, how, what, what's that looking like? Have you been able to, to – have you been catching balls with Malachi? Does that work? How's he looking? Yeah. Um, um, what's the battle going to be like? It's definitely going to be a battle because um, I'd say this. Like, I haven't seen Malachi play in against any defense yet. Right. But I've seen Mad Dog. I've, you know, gone to camp with Mad Dog. I've watched him because I've been on the sidelines a lot for the last two years with my legs. So, seeing Mad Dog is he's one of the smartest football players I know, and he throws a really pretty football. But, you know, Malachi being ranked so high and, you know, having all this stuff, like, he uh, and I've thrown the ball with him. He throws the ball really well. So, it's, like, it's going to be a battle. It's definitely not going to be anything given to, you know, Malachi or Mad Dog. It's definitely going to be, you know, from here all the way up until week one, it's going to be probably still an iffy battle who's going to be QB1. Nice. Really? Yeah, because even, you know, we might have games that, you know, if Mad Dog comes in or starts or if Malachi and one of them has, a you know, an iffy start that we have a – Good enough quarterback to put him as. Oh, two quarterback system. Don't do it. Oh, <laughs> Don't yeah, do it, dude. Not, not oh. that again, you heard it. <laughs> was that, what was, okay. <laughs> I feel like we could ask, sorry, I'm asking. No, this is yeah. fascinating. I'm really, really enjoying this. Too. But it's like, we talked a lot about the, the two QB system last year. Was that a just interesting? That, that's probably something, I've never seen it quite done that way. Um, yeah. What it, was that like being a receiver on that team? It was, it was different because, you know, you have different People thought like Taylor had a weird like he had a different arm motion, yeah. and so it's like you're just trying to catch the balls from these two guys. You know, you're practicing with Taylor all off season. You're practicing with Taylor in the summer. You know, all your routes are to Taylor's like how he throws and how he does everything. Now it's Mad Dog who comes. The ball comes off a lot smoother, cleaner. Mm. You know, it's you know right there. So it's just like different adjusting. And then when it's during the season, it's like okay, well, who's going to start this drive and who's going to do this drive and who's going to do this? Like yeah. if Taylor's in this drive, we're going to get maybe like two passes and maybe it's going to be. a run heavy series if mad dog is in the defense is gonna be dropping eight you know yeah. he's he's a guy who can sling it so it's like you know having that in the aspect it was kind of like you know it worked at some situations like you see Taylor running around 20 yards in the backfield and then get a <laughs> game yeah. Yeah. touchdown yeah. so it's like yeah we had aspects of you know Taylor was a free of nature athlete at quarterback that you know Michael Vick kind of like kind of experienced when it comes to running the ball mm-hmm. then you have mad dog coming in here who can pick a defense apart throwing so it's like these teams are trying to like okay, well, number four is in, you know, drop eight. So it was just – it was very weird because, like, you'd get different coverages that were – you know, we plan, like, different schemes for, like, how they play on third downs. Yeah. And if Taylor's in, they would just completely say, screw that scheme. We're going to do, like, this kind of coverage. So it's, like, <laughs> yeah. kind of screw the – like, it just kind of just mess everything up a little bit. But, I mean, it worked out at the end. It was cool to see Mad Dog do well. Yeah. He's he's a great like I yeah I love Mad Dog. Do you he's call him guy. Mad Dog to his yeah. face? Yeah, You're like hey, what up, Mad Dog? <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. his deal. <laughs> yeah, no, I love it was that just guy. cool. I mean, he looks shorter. He is. He's yeah. not fighting. Yeah. What, what's he listed at? 
I don't know, like 5'10", 5'11"? Yeah, he's yeah, not 5'10 yeah. or 5'11", is he? <laughs> uh, Maybe. I'm going to say on here he is. Okay. So. <laughs> okay. <laughs> he's recording? Yeah. I mean, it was cool to see him do well. I mean, he threw a good ball. Like, things were going, especially yeah. UCF. They were just like, hey, oh, get in. Dude. Yeah. And he's like, all right. And then he just kind of we went down and scored, that and last, it was just that wild. That last drive when he fought for that first down. Yeah. He was ballsy. I mean, it was inspiring, yeah, it, was ballsy. it wasn't with his arm. It was with his legs, and it was awesome. No, he's a competitor. Like, He's yeah. a competitor. He wants to win. He would do anything to win. And it's like, he proven it. Like, even against Memphis, we had that two-minute drive that was like, okay, yeah. yeah, let's get Mad Dog. And he drove down 80 yards on the field and threw, a, I think, a swing touchdown to Ashton. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's like, that kid, <sighs> like, he wants to he wants to win. And like you said, like, the UCF, he got a first down. That was his sweet. Legs. Like fourth and two, he just, yeah. you know, truck, tried trucking his way through some linebackers. Yeah. Yeah. That was cool to see him do well. I mean, he seems like a nice guy. I didn't, it was just it was just such an interesting season because he was just, like, thrust into the spotlight. Yeah. yeah. They're like, all of a sudden, and then Talon's like, you know, there was that dynamic, and then the media just goes wild with that on TV. Like, mm-hmm. hey, we got two guys, and they're back and forth. And and it hey, seems hey. like Dirk really likes Mad Dog, yeah. too. I mean, it seems like he likes that type of player, the throwing and yeah. everything. And so it, it seemed from the outside that, that Talon – I mean, it's only natural when that he went into the season. It seemed like being the guy, right? And then which he was, which he was. Yeah. I, I think. Yeah. I mean, I, maybe it was closer inside the building than we ever knew. But we're gonna, we're gonna run to win the game. Yeah, <laughs> uh, there he but, we're gonna run to win. Yeah, yeah. but Taylor, it seemed like he played his best football after Mad Dog got hurt. Yeah, and 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 I don't know if that was just a relief of hey, no one's looking on my shoulder, I can just play, and and maybe. Did Bush, it felt, once Mad Dog was gone, did Bush, did the offense change a little You're bit? You're crafting did they, that it, question, we, really. <laughs> we, it felt like he went back to what Dirk Cutter was doing with, with Talon the year before. Year before. Yeah. It, did it, was, it, kind, it was kind of a weird thing, because like you can say that, but it was like also Mad Dog left in New Mexico. Mm-hmm. So that's when Avalos got fired, too. Yeah. So yeah, it was yeah, kind of yeah. like Bush was kind of like... yeah able to do what he wanted to do more rather than having anyone over his shoulder kind of yeah because Danielson's a very like I'm defense like do your thing do your thing you're scoring 30 points a game like I'm not gonna say like anything about it just do like witness this game so maybe that was the reason maybe Bush realized like okay well I truly just have Taylor as a play action guy yeah. or just run the ball guy so I don't know if those if Avalos you know not being there would kind of help Bush just kind of open up his side of the things for just strictly for Taylor or you know Taylor did play good when uh, the last four games. He yeah, was able he did. To play, so he did. We, the, big controversy, or er, not controversy? Like we, everyone's debated the the two QB system, the way that it was. Was that more of a Bush thing? They're both gone now. Yeah. Was that more of a Bush thing, or was that more of an Avalos thing? Do you have any idea? Are you I, just? I don't. I don't. I wasn't in the room. Yeah. But I think it might have been more of an Avalos thing. Yeah. I think uh, in summer there was a couple of us kind of watching. It was like okay, like. Mad Dog can he can play. He can really? play like really. He's That's like, impressive. Yeah, it was like he's kind of dude. Like, his name is Mad Dog. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you got it. He's like a pilot, like an F one yeah. pilot or something. <laughs> yeah, so it's kind of like okay, this guy can play, but like you know, you have Taylor who's like okay, he's not like he was doing good in summer ball and stuff. It's like this guy's a freak. Like yeah, like generate like crazy athlete. Like, yeah, at quarterback, like okay, so it's like we have this guy who we know like Mad Dog, and it's like we have Taylor who has like the highest potential like in college uh. football quarterback right now that. You know, if he's doing what he's been doing against our defense, like, we should have a chance of beating UW because, you know, if he's able to run and make right decisions, like, not a lot of people can stop that. So, I think it might have been more of Avalos a little bit. Yeah. I got a question for you, Austin. You played you played quarterback in high school. Yeah. Uh, Riley Smith also played quarterback. Yeah. If the current quarterback room was totally just, let's say it got hit by a bomb or something. <laughs> Hopefully not. Or Gosh. they got hit by a truck. Let's say they just got injured. <laughs> we, we don't have to be too group. I, I, went, I, went pretty quick, ex- yeah. I went pretty extreme there. <laughs> Who's the best non-quarterback quarterback on the team? <laughs> would they put you in as it probably fifth, st- sixth string, whatever? I wouldn't. I don't know how to say that because I don't know if they just put a- Ashton as a wildcat. And <laughs> just just no, yeah, no, we're throwing the ball. We're throwing. <laughs> yeah, we're throwing the ball. It'd definitely probably be me or Riley. Okay. Oh, Riley. yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Riley can throw the ball. I mean, he played. He was here playing quarterback for his first, I think, year or two here at yeah. BSU. So it'd probably be Riley. And then I think if something, if Riley wasn't doing it, then it'd probably be, there you probably go. be the next guy up. Watch out, folks. Hey, we got <laughs> a guy over here, dude. That's sweet. <laughs> That's cool, man. Um. Another question. No, Before I Before we get to that, oh, another. just real quick. Go for it. We've listed all these things that you're good at. <laughs> Track, 
football, <laughs> basketball. Um, what's one thing that people wouldn't know that you're just like, you've got a knack for it? That like, hey, I'm good at this. That uh, I would say frisbee golf or bowling. Frisbee? Say it out. <laughs> yeah. I play a lot of frisbee golf. Okay. Frolf. Do you call it frolf or frisbee? Frolf. I, t- I say froth, but yeah, frisbee golf. <laughs> froth. Yeah. Do you say let's go toss the disc around? Yeah, or, yeah. yeah. There's a couple guys that we go play with. I have like 30 discs. Do you have a satchel? 30 discs. <laughs> yeah, you do backpack. not. I do. <laughs> I do. I got, I got a lot of discs. That's a lot of clubs. Yeah. Dude. What's the preferred course? Uh, and Morrison. What's your and home course? It's got to be Ann Morrison. Ann Morrison for sure due yeah. to the fact that it's, it's right by right the there. Yeah, so we can just all walk over, just get in one car and just get out of there. Yeah. But Eagle Island has a pretty cool yeah. course. Ooh, they yeah. have, like, a nice one that's actually a little more challenging. Yeah. Um, there's one up kind of, like, on the lo- like the ridge of Lucky Peak that's kind of okay. cool. And then there's some in Nicole that are pretty fun. Okay. Do you have a handicap? Did I didn't do that. Can I you have a handicap? In <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I don't. I, you know, it's usually not. I don't know. Do you usually win? Yeah, are you I've, like pretty I've, good? I've played in tournaments like in Idaho. Get that out! That you that I have won a couple. <laughs> you have not. Yeah, 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 have I, you I, really? I won, yeah, I played out in. Uh, I think it was in Nampa, right along the. I can't remember the river, but yeah, out in Nampa, and uh, I think there was like fifty people competing. I got second place. Whoa. I won like. I think it was like a ten dollar buy, and I won like seventy bucks. There hey. you go. Yeah. So I'll pay that, for what? A couple discs. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Hold on. Wait. Yeah. I've played uh, we frisbee need to dig golf. into this okay. a little bit. And I've only seen three, a driver, a mid-range, and a putter. Yeah. Dude, that's like buying but, the starter set like okay. on Amazon or something. <laughs> that's true, but it's like if we're going, how many mid-range? I mean, I really use only two discs, but I have a lot just due to the fact like I bring buddies and stuff. And ah. like, there's different discs that like turn. So like, there's like four numbers that tell you like different, like one's distance, one's like yeah. rotation to the left, one's the rotation to the left, Ooh. one's like hover and stuff <laughs> like that. So, like, I, those are all different discs with all the combinations, but I really use, use two. I just have all these because, like, my parents, my friends have gotten some for me just due to the fact, like, oh, you actually like this a lot. That's a good point. I once went with a serious rolfer. Yeah. I used his discs, and I threw one in the pond. Oh, boy. Yeah. And he's like. Did you go get it? No, it was in the <laughs> middle. I was, like, I was trying you to drive the green. You didn't get invited back, did you? Oh, I was trying to drive the green on par four across you, the you thing. Shank, you shanked a frisbee. And it's, like, up, and then, you know, you're watching it go down, oh, and he's like, like a, yeah, bro, like, yeah. that's a nice. A little more expensive a nice than, a, than a Pro V1. Yeah. And I was like. <laughs> <laughs> Those are expensive. <laughs> Man, so okay. Last question before what, we get into that. What about what bowling you, though? No, oh, we didn't talk. Hold about on. We know he's good at bowling. What are you not good at? What is something that people be surprised? Uh, you you've tried and you just you suck at it. Art. Art. Uh, okay. Can art. you suck at art? art. You can Have suck you seen, at, I like, suck at art. Hunter yeah. Biden's <laughs> art. art. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He can sell that for a lot of money. Art and I can't dance. You can't oh. dance. Oh. I'll dance, yeah. but I suck at it. Mm. Yeah. I get, I'm get made fun of dancing. But like, have you ever tried to learn steps or is this just like freestyle Just dancing? rhythm. I'm not just good with. That. Yeah. yeah, I'm just goofy on rhythm. But if they gave you like a TikTok dance to learn. Ooh. I can't do that. No? I look stupid. I, I get made, uh, usually all of I'm us the, here would. I'm yeah, we know how to the dance, and everyone on the football team records it because it's funny. <laughs> I'm actually <laughs> glad you didn't say pickleball. Everybody's doing pickleball. I love pickleball too. Ah, okay. I play it. I just, like I said, I just, I'm more into bowling and frothing. Froth. Frothing. Yeah. Why froth? 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 Not Why froth. 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 Yeah. froth. <laughs> frothing Dude, is like the inside know. term of uh, of frisbee golfing. Okay. <laughs> Hey, for those of you that waited around for five questions, we're gonna play five questions. Yes. With awesome Did bowl. you guys see that that like the we best like frisbee golf, questions. the best frisbee golf of all time, the best frisbee golf throw of all time? Have no. you seen that? <coughs> it was the guy. It was like went around and like it was like the it was a hole in one, one yeah. from like 150 yards out, or it was like 70 yards out, and he had to make it to take it to a playoff or the national championship. That, yeah. It was like the best throw ever. Yeah, Let's find that. <laughs> Here we go. Five questions. Uh, Austin, you've seen five questions before. You kind of know how the drill works. Yeah. Don't get mad at me if questions, <laughs> you know, doesn't they don't make a lot of sense. Yeah, they, they don't, don't make a lot of sense. They're not supposed to. Uh, geography. Ooh. What we're going to start out so with. So, wait, can we jump into or is it just uh, an Austin? This is for Austin. Awesome. All right, okay, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, and a score to beat, we had Dave Southern on. He was three of five. We kind of gave him one, so it's he was three of five. Johnny, uh, Johnny Ball game was three of five. Okay. So that's kind of the mark to beat <laughs> if you want to get invited back for the tournament of champions. Yeah, <laughs> uh, number one, geography. You went to Bora High School. Yes. Within a thousand feet, how tall is Mount Bora? Oh, that's a good question. I think I know it. I know this one too. Come on. You guys know. This? I think oh, I know. Gosh, With, okay. You got a thousand so feet. So as per reference, give or take. as per reference, the um, the 
top of bogus, I believe, is 8,000. Okay. I, I don't Just know. as a reference. I'm going to say... Mount Moore is the tallest mountain in, in Idaho. Idaho. Yeah, I'm going to say... I'm going to say 17,000, but I'm not going to say that. I'm going to say 13. I don't... 13,000. Oh, yes. that's correct. Yes. Yes. Hey, 12, how about 000, that? 12,662 feet. Okay. Yes. So you were just over. Nice. Go. Good one work. for one. Go. Yeah. <laughs> uh, question number two. Uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't have got that. Oh, I thought I, I had I knew it was that. upper 12. So I knew it was upper 12. That's right. when you say, yeah, I would have got that. <laughs> I wouldn't have got that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, number two, better nickname for your teammate, Prince Strawn. Fresh Prince or Strawny Ballgame? Fresh Prince. Ooh. That's correct. Oh. <laughs> I like Strawny. Do you what have a nickname f- for Strawn? Uh, no. No? no really. I just call him Prince. Prince. What's the, Prince is what such a good it's name. A name. It's what was the second one? Strawny ball game. Strawny ball game. <laughs> yeah, I like that. Did like Chat GPT give you that? No, or? I mean, oh, you made it up. I, I, I like that. Nice job. That's pretty Dude, nice. between Straw, uh, Prince and Bolt, those are two of the best like combination. Oh yeah, wide receiver names. That's awesome. That is good. Uh, okay. Oh, Gatlin Blair, Gatlin Bear. Gatlin, 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 Gatlin yeah. It's well, Bear. he's in Oregon. Bear. We're not talking about that him anymore. Matter. Yeah, he's gone. <laughs> Don't bring that up in five questions. Oh, I'm sorry. Gatlin. Okay. Uh, number three. If you had to choose one for the rest of your life, so if you choose one, the other one goes away. Okay. okay. Doesn't mean you have to eat it every day. Oh, okay. It just means you only get this, and the other one's gone. Uh, French toast or waffles? Wait, wait, wait. He he could eat either. He could eat if, it. If he chooses French toast, he can no longer eat waffles. Clear, there's a clear answer to this. Waffles. Oh, that's incorrect. Yeah. Oh, I had waffles. <laughs> I had, oh, I had, I had waffles French toast, like, all yeah. day on that. Sorry, Austin. Do we do we accept waffles? Oh uh, no, I mean the answer so was the more answer was with waffles. Total, hundred percent, hundred percent. And you mix it up a little bit. French toast is just syrup and powder. Whoa, exactly, exactly. He's on to something. Exactly. You get fruit, chicken and waffles. You can get fruit, chicken fruit, and waffles. Yes. it could be savory. All it right, could be fruity. Take a vote. We give it to him. Uh, I mean, the answer was the answer. I'm just saying there's a I mean, there's a clear answer on that one. So <laughs> it hurts me, but dude, waffles French are toast. good. <laughs> they are they are good. I didn't say they weren't good. <laughs> That's just a correct yeah. answer. And, and it, it's in bold on my computer Okay, for those at home. <laughs> two for three. Uh, number four. Two for three. Really good score so far. Don't mess this up. Your teammate, Marco Notriani. Yeah. Okay. Spell, which I believe is, <laughs> which I believe is misleading the way that people pronounce his name. Because it's Notriani. not how it's spelled. You don't spell it how you sound it. Spell Notriani. Ooh. Ooh. N-O-T-R- See, oh. they're misleading you. M N I. You finished. You fin- N N I is the way to. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's incorrect. I wouldn't have got it. Then. That's tough. N O T A A R A I N N I. Like so a notary. Like Nota Raini. Nota Raini. Yeah. yeah, I was not. <laughs> no Triani. They're 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 putting the it, I before yes. the A, and it's wrong. Yeah. It's not. Yeah. All right. Easier to pronounce. Do you know Marco? Good guy. Yeah, I love Marco. Awesome. Yeah. A lot of rehab sessions with him in the <laughs> training room. Oh, nice. <laughs> did he get injured too or something? Or uh, at the end of the season, he hurt his foot. Yeah. Is that how he pronounces it himself? Yeah. No Triani. Yeah. Huh. Ooh. Well, you know Agbo. Abo. Yeah. They all say Abo now. Yeah. And I was the like, G- where did the G the go? <laughs> <laughs> like, how did the G disappear? All right. All you're right. two for four. One more, Austin. Come on, man. I think you can do this. I think you can get three for five and finish with a respectable score. Your name, your first name is Austin. Name a current or former former professional athlete named Austin. Austin Pettis. Oh, there we go. There you go. boom. Hey. All right. Even a Boise a State time. Yeah. Nice. That's There's double. A, we could have done Austin Reeves, Austin Eckler. We could have done. What's uh, what's Stone Cold on Steve Austin? <laughs> he's a wrestler. He's professional. Well, I think he played. Yeah. He yeah, probably played football. We, but last, no, he's not a NFL. Show. That's his last name, right? Steve Austin. We yeah. would have accepted Ooh. that. Oh, yeah. 100%. Three for five. Here we go. Hey. Good job, Austin. That's nice job. <laughs> Nice. Five questions with Austin. Five Bolt. questions getting out there. That's like still like I think the highlighter one was the most out there I've yeah. heard. <laughs> Didn't make any sense the highlighter one, but <laughs> look, I don't know. not everybody's gonna get five of five. It's I don't want it to be easy. If we were gonna have one of your teammates on the pod, who would be the fu- who who would be the next funnest guy to bring on? Probably Tyler Crow. Tyler Crow. Yeah, oh, T. Crow. Crow. Yeah, T. Crow. He's a character. Local isn't guy. he from? Isn't he local guy too? Yeah, he's from uh, Skyview. So. Skyview, okay. the Hawks. Yeah. yeah. So he's he's he's, he's an out there guy. Yeah, he's back. He's right. Back. He's yeah. coming back. Pullback. 
Mm. <laughs> the mullet and everything. Is he? I got. I have a. I have, I'm sorry. We're just like pepper. Uh, yeah, we weren't really planning on a billion questions too I'm often. I'm super interested. But, but if he's, we here, have him. He's so. here. I'm super I think interested. People are interested. I'm, in yeah. I'm super interested on like the NIL deal. How often is that talked about? It's a lot. I mean, there's a lot of like what you can and can't do. Like you got to make sure you go from through. the school. Yeah, like, you got to yeah. make sure. So we have like compliance guys that like. If someone shoots you a deal, they read over and say, okay, this mm. is legit. You can do it. But, like, if you don't – like, if you just kind of do something on your own and you start taking money and it's like, well, this is legit in the NCA here, I think you use a whole year of eligibility. Ooh, ooh, ooh. So it's That's like, a big blow. So kind like, of – they're not, not – not to tell you to do anything, but, I mean, you'll see what's going on. They're not enforcing anything <laughs> right now. Yeah, it's like, are you kidding me? Yeah, so, but you don't want to be that guy. No. Yeah. You know? And you know they pound Boise State. You know, I mean, just – Do you have somebody you work with? I mean, let's say you want to – Isn't I'm, that Walsh guy? Isn't it like – He's good. I don't know. But uh, there's like NIL, right, name, image, and likeness. But then what about like the whole – does it fall under something else if you want to have some type of business or sell merch or something like that? Does that fall under the same umbrella? It mm. basically does, yeah. So you usually uh, find some company that's willing to do that and, you, you know – Profit depends on like however you guys sign off. So it could be like 60, 40, 70, 30, 50, 50. So yeah. it just kind of depends. And like you can either get someone to kind of help you like reach out to people, or you can just do it yourself and start like saying, like, hey, I want to do an NL. Like, let's talk about like offers and negotiate some stuff. So because like back in the day, Ian Johnson crocheted or knitted hats. hats. Yeah. If you created Austin Bolt t shirts or whatever on your own. Oh, dude. Which has, is an opportunity, dude. The bolt? That'd be sweet. He has but some. Like, Haven't you made some? He, no? Who am I thinking Brett, of? Brett was it Emac? Us, I think. Yeah, yeah, Brett. Oh, Emac, there's Stefan Cobbs, Marco. They had some they stuff. They all have some, like, shirts that just have, like, pictures of them on it. And says like, oh, okay. Uh, so, yeah, there's there's opportunities you can do. But, like, if I did it myself, i probably, you know, i make all the profit. Yeah. Yeah. And so, unless if I, like, you know, let's say I want to go to, like, Nike or yeah. something. Like, but you do know, you have I, to consult with somebody at Boise State before you do something um, like that? Or I don't know about that one. I would for sure just just, just to make cause. sure just to don't be safe and double check. Yes, yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> I don't. I wouldn't think so due to the fact that it's all you just doing it yourself. Yeah. So it's like basically just running your own job. So I would say that you don't have to, but yeah, I would just double check if I ever tried that, but I can't because – I can't craft like that. <laughs> art. art. Remember? Yeah, art. Art's not good. <laughs> Get somebody art. else to make the art So for you. hold on. Would you be in favor of the following? This is an interesting scenario. We talked about this. Where if, if during a game, like the announcer said, oh, hey, here's Austin Bolts. He just made a good play. Here's his QR code. QR, QR code, code for like his Venmo. Everybody, whatever. And would it you flashed be, up on the screen and people could take a picture and send you money. Would you be like, sure, I don't care. Yeah, I'll take free money. <laughs> <laughs> but here's my worry. You you're all you're all of a sudden like bidding in the huddle. Yeah. <laughs> you're like, who needs money? Like eat like whatever, bolt or <laughs> or louder, or like who needs the money for this week? Like who's paying for the party? And then they're like, hey, throw it to louder. He's got like uh, he got I like don't think bucks some school within the if if the NIL of course everything is changing I'm I'm sure it's just crazy for you guys but like all these rules are changing but I think some school this year I would not be shocked at all if at a minimum they just had QR codes like when you're coming in the stadium or whatever and like to just literally Me? give money to guys you can do it like you, you can, can do anything yeah. now you can do anything. but like that would just be insane Dude, like Bolt scores a touchdown his QR code and all of a sudden you get to you know Dude. locker room after the game you're like Dude I made. 30 grand from that exactly touchdown. that's a big deal like, I could, that's I, a huge deal i know that's crazy if everybody in the stadium saw that or even if they did it on like if they if they put it out on the social media like i don't know that the bsu could put it out on their social media for a player but your player like a player's social media rep could yeah and you it's know if everybody like, follows them and then they're like hey snap it and then and then like i remember in high school totally dumb story again super sorry <laughs> there was a backup tight end who ran in? So our starting tight end, Derek Schumann, really good tight end, by the way. He played NFL ASU. player, NFL player. He's really yep. good. Um, anyway, backup tight end. At the time, you know, in high school, the receivers would run the play in. Yeah. He ran in the wrong play to himself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And oh. he ran. It was a reverse to him. No, the backup. <laughs> no who, kidding. Who was this guy? Eric Miller. Sorry, Mute Miller. That Eric Miller. Anyway, and and nobody really knew until the coaches were like. What? swearing him out on the sideline like that was not the play and i think it was like a two-yard gain and then everybody was talking about it. I was like oh miller ran in his own play which is like that's 
essentially <laughs> the ultimate, like if you change the coach's call. Like, oh, yeah, not good. And yeah. so that's what worries me. You know, if they yeah. run in a call and the player's like, I need, I need some, some money. <laughs> now you guys I'm are going to have helmet communication this year. Oh, right? really? I th- For the, the quarterbacks. They're trying they just to, passed yeah, it. Yeah, they're trying to get I don't know if BSU is going to do that or not. Oh, dude, you got to do that. I hope. <laughs> you would think so. It, I, it, I've been calling for that for forever. Yeah, they, they passed stupid. it, so it can happen. I think, yeah. yeah. That's the dumbest thing that, like, sign stealing, the whole Michigan sign stealing thing, the whole, <laughs> all that stuff, sign stealing, like, just get microphones in the helmet. Yeah, no, I agree. I got one more question for you. I know we we'll probably want to wrap this up. but oh, Wait, wait, wait. Sorry. Go would ahead. you approve of the? Would you? What do you he think about that? Oh yeah, the QR money. code. He take money. it, man. Yeah. I mean, it's like in the NFL, isn't there like incentives if you get like fifteen yeah. catches or something? So it's kind of yeah, like the same contracts. thing, I guess. Yeah. I mean, maybe not as you know in the huddle we can like fight over it, but yeah, enough. I mean, shoot, if I had a touchdown, I got thirty k or something. <laughs> <laughs> it's so sweet. How dude. wild would that be, dude? You're running, you're uh, like, you're yeah, like, <laughs> dude, just like. <laughs> Seeing your bank account go up as you're running, and like oh, the longer yeah. the touchdown, the more the thing. Oh, dude, that's that'd so, be so funny. <laughs> so, oh. and, and you can pay more if to do is like custom. Uh, dude, you gotta have like a bolt yeah. dance. He's not a yeah. good dancer, dude. Yeah. Dang it, you can figure it out for you can figure ten grand or something. Yeah. So oh, there, there's wild. a lot of the national guys out there writing, you know, with the whole playoff expansion, and all this stuff. And there's there's people out there saying, oh, the the G five teams, a group of five teams, should just just play for their own championship, right? Yeah. It, almost like the FCS does now. And I've I've resisted that. Like, dude, if we've got a seat at the table, if there's a chance to get to the playoff, even though we might play Alabama and even though it might get ugly, but you never know, right? Yeah. Um, being a player, are you – if I told you today, okay, at the end of this year, your goal is either the, the playoff, 12-team playoff, or – to get into a chance to win a national championship at the group of five level, what gets you more excited? The playoffs. Yeah, yeah right? Yeah, I'd rather just... Because, like, if you do the group of five, it's, like, only, like, you know, the limited teams. Now it's, yeah. like, yeah. I'm champion of the whole college yeah. football yeah. this whole yeah. year. Like, I'd rather do the, the playoff. Yeah. The thing I don't understand, I've never understood why BSU isn't a power five team. Like, college. And then we could talk about that for a while. Yeah. Mark, Mark's like, going to say, ask Kurt Apsey. <laughs> That's what Mark's going to say. That that took us down. But I just don't understand. I'm like, we've been good for so long. And we're a good team. We're a good program. We have whatever academics I don't believe actually plays a part in it. But I just don't understand why we haven't been. He's a clean boy. Let him sleep (laughs) in your bed. Let Let us be in power five. I don't know. Topic for another day. Yeah, it is. All right. Well. Anything else? I'm going to be in Vegas. A report from down there. And uh, we got the Mountain West Championship game. Will and we got report? tomorrow camp starts. So yeah. what are we most excited about camp? Um, Austin, what are you most excited about in this year, what, fourth or fifth camp or whatever? Uh, new offense, new dirt, dirt cutter, Malachi, what, what gets, what's uh, the most exciting thing for you? This is the first time I'm actually going to be able to, like, practice receiver for a whole year. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. So, like, every year I've been three different positions or mm-hmm. switching out positions from spring camp to summer camp. So it's pretty exciting to actually, like, play a whole spring, summer, and a season now because I've not yet to done that, do that. So, like, hopefully I don't put on a lot of weight and I have to move back to tight end. But <laughs> as of right now, I'm staying as a receiver for the rest of the year. Were you aware of the free bolt campaign we had going last year? Yeah. No, yes. I've never seen that. <laughs> yes. Yeah. That's awesome. We were all Where's that t- that. I thought you were going to wear that. It was tape. I know. <laughs> Just put tape <laughs> I on you going to put more tape It on. was awesome, dude. Seeing you play last year, like, seeing you get time was, I don't know why, just satisfying to see a local – product yeah. Yeah. get out there and, and play that was awesome yeah it's like do frack from the injury two years ago like that's why i didn't play all yeah. of last year until the last five games because that's when i finally got cleared again mm. to play oh is that what it was yeah so i didn't get cleared until what was it colorado St- no was it new mexico i played no fresno state it was fresno state was like the first time i got actually legit oh really i didn't know we didn't do we didn't we never no, we knew didn't about injuries. Tra- like you know you travel the people who, you know, starters slash seconds, yeah. So yeah. like for receivers, third string too. So I didn't travel up until Fresno State. And that ah. was my first week actually, mm. like, activated to practice. And actually, so I, yeah, I didn't play for, mm. you know. So point. all of those posts that were, like, free bolt at the start of the it year. It was, was all like, for naught. <laughs> it was an injury thing. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> funny. They're like, we're yeah. trying. <laughs> well, I'm surprised I didn't say that. Huh. 
Yeah, so that's was, yeah, that was why I wasn't. Yeah, I, w- I wasn't in the depth charts or anything. I was still just recovering from my injury yeah. and still trying to figure out what's up with the leg. Well, it was awesome to see you play last year, man. Yeah, man like some awesome. of those plays, you did great. I mean, it was great to see you be a part of the offense. It was like super exciting from our perspective yeah. to see you play. Man, it was awesome. So well, always yeah. fun to root for a local kid. Yep, for sure. Always. Good luck so, this year. Yeah. yeah. Thank you guys. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Um, Thanks for being on. Austin Bolt. Uh, for those of you out there watching, listening to us, be, f- be fans of Austin Bolt. Yes. Dude, yell, Austin's yell great, Yell loud man. for him. Number 81. Yeah. You know his number. If the QR code <laughs> flashes. QR code pops up. <laughs> Pass him a few bucks. <laughs> you heard what he slip, said. Send his 20. Put, put his Venmo up. <laughs> <laughs> you have man, to actually man. report anything over 600 now. Oh, dude, that's it. That would be income. You have to be paying taxes on. That. I would. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay, man. Paying taxes hey, on something. It means you're making money. Making yeah, that's money. true. Yeah. yeah. Uh, thanks for checking us out. Thanks for watching, Austin. Best of luck this season. Best We're of luck. rooting for you. We totally. love you. Um, for those watching, subscribe, like, do all that stuff. Uh, we'll see you next time. Yep.